In this video, I'm going to explore the Tetrad experiment window of star genetics. And these experiments are based off of the yeast sample exercise, which you can access by navigating to File New in Star Genetics. However, I'm working off of my saved work session, which I called Yeast Sample Exercise Assignment. So you would you want to use the Tetrad experiment window of star genetics if you would like to perform mating and replica plating experiments that involve tetrads. You can also, in the Tetrad experiment window, deduce information regarding the tetrads genotype and mating type by replica plating the tetrads onto selective media conditions. I'd like to continue exploring strain 1 and 3 which I found in my previous non-tetrad experiment to contain mutations in different genes in the leucine biosynthesis pathway. I'm going to get started by clicking the tetrad experiment window. And the first thing you'll see is that Star Genetics is asking you to drop two haploid strains into the mating site. So I'm going to add strain 1 by dragging and dropping it, but I'm going to also add strain 3 by clicking on it. Now that my strains have been added to the mating site, I can now click the mate and sporulate button. And this will generate tetrads. You can see that each tetrad contains four spores, which are the result of meiosis. Just like in the non-tetrad experiment window, there are two boxes in which you can select your conditions for your experiment. I would first like to determine the phenotype of the tetrads on media that lacks leucine. Because this does not involve mating the tetrads with any other strains, I'm going to select none in the top box. However, I'd like to see what the phenotype is on media that lacks leucine, and so I'm going to replica plate my tetrads on media that lacks leucine, which is minus lu, in this lower box, and click replica plate. I can now see that I have two different types of tetrads. Not only does the program tell me or remind me of the phenotype of strains 1 and 3 on media that lacks leucine, but it also shows me the phenotype of each of the spores on media that lacks leucine. And I can see that there are two different types of tetrads. One type of tetrad contains four spores that do not grow on leucine whereas another tetrad type contains two spores that grow and two spores that don't grow. As you can see, the location of the spores that grow are different in different tetrads. At the bottom, star genetics counts the different tetrad types, and so it easily tells me that there are five tetrads where none of the spores grow and five tetrads with the pattern of two grow and two don't grow. I'd like to add more tetrads to my experiment, and I can do that by selecting the Add More Tetrads button at the top. And I'm going to actually select that I want 90 more tetrads to bring up my number to 100, and click OK. Now my experiment has generated 100 tetrads, and again the summary is at the bottom. I can now see almost equal numbers of the two different tetrad types. And if I'd like to add even more tetrads, then I can do so by clicking on this Add More Tetrads button again, and let's add 500 more tetrads, and click OK. After Star Genetics generates 100 tetrads, it resorts to a summary only mode, and you can see that only the summary is displayed. However, if you would like to display the individual tetrads at any time, simply click on the Display Individual Tetrads button and they will show up. Because there are so many, it may take a moment. Okay, and now you can see all of your tetrads. I'm going to save this experiment by selecting the New Experiment button, which automatically saves your active experiment. And it will now appear in the Saved Experiments window. And I'm going to rename this so that I can easily reference it at a later time and I'm going to call it strain 1 times strain 3 and click OK. While you can access your 
previously performed experiment in the saved experiments window, there are certain things that you can and cannot do with the saved experiment. I've already showed you how to rename an experiment, and this experiment is called strain 1 times strain 3. If you decide at a later time that you do not want the saved experiment, you can simply discard it by clicking the discard button. While the experimental results are shown here, you cannot generate more tetrads in the saved experiment window. To do that, you would need to repeat the experiment in the tetrad experiment window of Star Genetics. However, you can create more replica plating conditions. You can mate your tetrads on lawns of other strains and or plate on specific media conditions. I would like to test whether the spores in the tetrads that I've already generated can grow on media lacking tryptophan. So I'm going to select that from my media conditions and click replica plate. The results show that none of the tetrads contain spores that can grow on media lacking tryptophan. If at a later time you would like to have a large active experiment window but show your saved experiment side by side, you can select open in a new window. In this way you can look at two experiments more easily side by side. Now I'd like to show you one last experiment in the Tetrad experiment window of Star Genetics. In this experiment I'd like to mate two strains, generate tetrads, and then analyze the resulting tetrads by mating them with an additional strain and replica plating. To get started, I'd like to select the Tetrad Experiment button, and this will open the Tetrad Experiment window. I would like to mate strains 1 and strain 3, which we did previously, but in this case, I'd like to specifically identify spores within the Tetrad that contain both leucine mutations found in strain 1 and strain 3. So we can call them LU1 and LU2, but we would like to find double mutants. So I'm mating strain 1 and 3 and I've generated the tetrads and now I'd like to plate them on media that does not contain leucine and I'll select replica plate. Out of the resulting tetrads I can see that some spores can grow on media that contains leucine while others cannot grow. Now I know based on the type of tetrads that I'm expecting that tetrad number one represents a non-parental dye type or NPD and the two spores that fail to grow on media lacking leucine must contain mutations in both leucine genes found in strain one and strain three. Now for my future experiments I've been asked to identify a spore within a tetrad that is double mutant for both leucine genes in the biosynthesis pathway and also be MAT alpha mating type. So what I need to do now is replica plate these tetrads onto a lawn of the MAT A tester strain. If the spore is MAT alpha, then it will be able to mate with the MAT A tester strain and I will be able to select for the resulting diploids on minus trip minus lysine media. And that is the case because remember that the tester strains contain lysine mutation and so they cannot grow on media lacking lysine. And I know that strains 1 and strains 3 also contain tryptophan mutations. So only the resulting diploids from this cross will be able to grow on this media condition. And let's see what we find. I can see when I replica plate these tetrads onto the mat A tester lawn and select for the diploids on this media condition that some strains, some spores, excuse me, can grow and others cannot. And if I compare the specific spores across these different replica plates, I can easily identify several spores at first glance that contain both mutations or two mutations in the leucine bios biosynthesis pathway 
and must also be MAT alpha because they have been able to mate with the MAT A tester strain. It is this particular spore that I would like to use in future experiments. And to easily reference this in later experiments, I can actually drag this spore into the strains box. So let me drag it over here. And this is called experiment 6-1D. However, that name is fairly nondescriptive, so let's rename it. And I'm going to rename it LU1 minus LU2 minus to represent that it's a double mutant for both leucine genes, and it's also MAT alpha, and click OK. Alternatively, if you do not want to add a particular strain to the strains box, you can access those strains in the saved experiments window. So let's save this active experiment. Clicking new experiment automatically saves the experiment, and you can now access it in your saved experiments window. If I would like to use a particular strain in a tetrad experiment, for example, I can start the tetrad experiment and then drag the spore to the mating site. That way, if I only need to use a particular strain one more time, that's another way to easily do that. There's one more thing that I'd like to point out about this last experiment that we just performed. I'm going to expand the saved experiments window so that we can have a better look at it. In this experiment, if you'll remember, we replica plated the tetrads on a lawn of the MAT-8 tester strain and then selected a media condition to select for diploids. In this case, the visual depiction represents diploids that are the result of a mating experiment between the individual haploid spores in the tetrad and the MAT-A tester lawn. As a result, the normal tetrad types of parental dye type, non-parental dye type, and tetra type do not apply and the tetrad type summary is not applicable in this case.